Uh, I've got six o'clock. If you would, let's stand and have a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go ahead, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we honor you. We thank you for all that you are and all that you do. Thank you for your blessings in our life. And Father, as we assemble here this evening to conduct the business of the county, we ask for your wisdom and your guidance. And we ask these in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, roll call, please. Magistrate Perry? Here. Magistrate Phillips? Here. Magistrate Mann? Here. Magistrate Barrett? Here. Judge Stevens? Here. Appreciate everybody coming out uh, this evening. Uh, the first item of business on the agenda, item number four, is to approve the minutes of the regular session for March the 8th, 2018. What's the pleasure of the court? I like motion, Judge. Yes. A motion by Magistrate Mann. Second by Magistrate Perry. Any questions about the minutes? If not, uh, vote please. Magistrate Baird? Yay. Magistrate Perry? Yay. Magistrate Phillips? Yay. Magistrate Mann? Yay. Judge Stevens? Yay. Yay. Item number five is to approve the transfers as presented by Mark Sewell, our treasurer. What's the pleasure of the court? I'll make a motion. A motion by Magistrate Baird. <coughs> Second, Second by Magistrate Mann. Any questions about the transfers? Okay, if not, uh, vote please. Magistrate Perry? Yay. Magistrate Phillips? Yay. Magistrate Mann? Yay. Magistrate Baird? Yay. Judge Stevens? Yay. <coughs> Item number six, uh, recommend the approval of second reading and final approval of budget amendment number one. What's the pleasure of the court? I'll make a motion. Have a motion by Magistrate Phillips. I'll it, Second by Magistrate Mann. Any questions about the budget amendment? Okay, if not, vote please. Magistrate Baird? Yeah. Magistrate Perry? Yeah. Magistrate Phillips? Yeah. Magistrate Mann? Yeah. Judge Stevens? Yeah. Item number seven, uh, not anything that we need to take action on, uh, but in April of each year we present the, uh, the draft jail budget. Uh, and I've give, given you all a copy of that. Uh, in essence, based on uh, projected costs and current costs, with the remaining time left, we're looking at about 150000 something like that, over what we had budgeted in the jail fund uh, for this current uh, fiscal year. So this new draft jail budget, budget includes uh, that much of an increase plus a little bit more as a buffer because if you figure if you're going to have a percentage over what we budgeted last year, you need to plan for a little uh, a percentage over what uh, what the actual cost is as well. So that's what you have before you. The uh, bottom line on that is about $1,390,577.84 for that budget. Anybody have any questions? Again, where this, you know, this this is just a, a planning document uh, because really, when it, the rubber meets the road, is when we're having to calculate this in with our general fund and all the other budgets that we manage as well. So, I do have one question on that. I mean, if we're that far behind, and uh, this fiscal uh, monthly statement says we got three hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars in uh, general fund, we've never seen that much this late in the year. So, where where is our yeah, it's not. It's not that we're in a hole. It's just that much more. I understand than that, that, but I'm saying, where's right. all this extra money coming from if we're behind there? Well, the is extra that, money. Uh, the difference in in uh, what he said about the budget being one hundred fifty thousand dollars short and cash is right. two different things. So I understand that we've got the cash in general funds, so we have no cash shortage. Right. It's just that we didn't budget. I understand, what, I understand what I'm saying, but we're way above budget totals at this time of year than we've ever been. We sure are. I'll agree. And that's half a percent. Occupational taxes gotten us up to where we 
have a little bit of room to breathe and are able to pay our bills. If we, if we keep going back, we need to look at reducing that. I mean, it's, I mean, there's no sense in, you know, spending people's money if we don't have to add it. Well, I mean, I guess we can talk about that next yeah, well, time. I'm, I'll present sorry, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, I'll present the budget uh, at the next board meeting. So, anyway, uh, as I said, I don't, we don't need any action on, on that because it's just a planning document. So, uh, next item on the agenda, item number eight, <coughs> is to approve moving Josh Wolf from a full time EMT at a pay rate of 1035 per hour to full time advanced EMT at a pay rate of $12 per hour. This is per request of Jimmy Barnett, the EMS director. You have to explain it a little bit. It, it just doesn't mean that somebody's getting a raise. It's a whole new level, it's an advanced EMT level. It means that we get paid more for what he does now. His level goes up, we make more off him. You know, he is an advanced life support truck himself with an EMT. So we push all of our employees for the better uh, better service for the county. So he has completed this and fully completed his registry and everything. So that's the level he's at. So with with him, if this is approved, how many advanced EMTs do you have on staff? Hey. And if it wasn't for having the advanced DMT program, and we was the very first one in the state to ever have it, and now it's spreading everywhere. If it wasn't for the advanced DMTs with the paramedic shortage, we would have been dead in a lot of it. It's a really bad. Okay. Uh, let's pleasure the court. I'm a I'm motion by Master Phillips to second. second Master Perry. Any questions? Okay. Uh, vote please. Magistrate Mann? Yay. Magistrate Baird? Yay. Magistrate Perry? Yay. Magistrate Phillips? Yay. Judge Stevens? Yay. <clears throat> Item number nine is to approve hiring Megan Witt and Cody King as PRN EMTs at a pay rate of 1035 per hour. Uh, that'd be effective once <coughs> administrative code requirements are met. Megan will fill position left by Lori Duncan and Cody will fill position left by James Norris. Uh, for those of you who are here that may not understand what a PRN EMT is, I, most of the regulars know that because that tends to be what we do more than, than others. Uh, those are as needed, part-time as needed. Uh, in other words, they, they don't work, up, I mean, they don't work 24 hours a week like a regular full-time person would. They work up to 24 hours as they're needed to fill in slots. So anyway, uh, Let's pleasure the court. I have a motion. I have a motion to Perry. Second. Second. Master Bayer. Any questions or comments? Vote, please. Master Phillips? Yay. Master Mann? Yay. Master Bayer? Yay. Master Perry? Yay. Judge Stevens? Yay. Item number 10 is to approve resolution number 1804-12-1 regarding the site being giving me authority to sign community development block grant documents for the water district project. Uh, water district has applied for a community development block grant uh, to fund the project for redoing water lines in the southeastern section of the county. Uh, one of the few, few places that's kind of the holdout needs major repair. So uh, what's the pleasure of the court? I have a motion by Magistrate Phillips. I'll second. Second by Magistrate Baird. Any questions or comments about the about that? <coughs> uh, vote please. Magistrate Mann? Yay. Magistrate Baird? Yay. Magistrate Perry? Yay. Magistrate Phillips? Yay. Judge Stevens? Yay. Item number 11 is to approve resolution number 180412-2 regarding uh, Homeland Security funds for equipment and or services for the ambulance service. This is per request of Jimmy Barnett, the EMS director, and he wants to explain what he's doing with that as well. This this is me asking for permission to let them allow me to apply. I mean, we got everything, but we have to go through this process. And every grant's different. Some of them you can get an ambulance, some of them you can get equipment. This is more or less uh, equipment up to probably 30 or 40,000. Uh, that's how we've, we've used different grants to grow with the loading systems, the power stretchers, to, to, to reduce the hurt of our staff and stuff like that. So we use this grant up to 30, 40,000 to get a stretcher or two and the, the big grants to get the loading system. 
So this year we're going to ask for stair chairs. We've got a good loading system, we've got good stretchers, we've got good, good equipment in that, but the stair chair actually has tracks on the back of it. If somebody is upstairs, we can build them in his chair and it's got tracks on the back of it with brakes and you can bring them down real slow to get them on the stretcher. So that's what we're going to ask for this year. It'll be about 46000 no. What's a pleasure to call? Got most of my minister Perry. Looks like I'm a minister Bayer. Any questions? Okay, a vote please. Minister Phillips? Yeah. Minister Mann? Yeah. Minister Bayer? Yeah. Minister Perry? Yeah. Judge Stevens? Yay. Yeah. Item number 12 is to approve the appointment and reappointment of Kim King and Wanda Worley to the McCurry County Public Library District Board of Directors for a term to run from uh, July the 18th of 18 to July the 17th of 2022. It's a pleasure of the court. I'll make a motion. I have a motion by Magistrate Phillips. I say the judge. Second by Magistrate Mann. Any questions? <coughs> uh, vote please. Magistrate Baird? Yeah. Magistrate Perry? Yeah. Magistrate Phillips? Yeah. Magistrate Mann? Yeah. Judge Stevens? Yay. Yeah. Uh, item number 13, uh, department heads updating the court. <coughs> For those of you who have been here, we've, we've been handling this. Uh, rather than having each department head to give a report, it's just uh, an opportunity for the court to ask a department head specific questions or for a department head to be able to, uh, to inform the court as to what's going on, uh, on some, something that you would think that would be interested in. So anyway, anybody have any questions? Anyone have anything you want to bring up to the court? Judge, I do. Cody, uh, our little abatement guy, I don't, I don't see him back there. But he called me the other day. He is need, needing a piece of equipment to help clean up dump sites. He says it's unsafe to go in there and get in your hands. And uh, he's wanting some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, like a little bobcat or something that you can go down in in there and clean it up and not a bobcat but something cheap around the litter abatement uh, budget he's not here he said that he was going to look for some equipment and bring us some prices but i don't see it so uh i think we might need to look into something like that or uh, andy might know if there's a grant for something like that to help him you know, clean up them dump sites because with needles nowadays and everything it'd be nice to have something to scoop it up I mean, have him look into that and then we'll see if, you know, what it is and how much and if we can afford it and if there's any kind of grants. That you could apply for the recycling grant to get a, one of those Bobcats to use. They use them a lot of recycling centers, but it's like you, like, it would have to be dedicated <laughs> to the recycling center and then it would just be few and far between that you'd be allowed to take it out into the field. Yeah. I say he would need one too that didn't have the wheels but had the uh, tracks. tracks. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of, you know, until we know what you actually need or whatever. You may be better off just to, I don't know if Lumber King has that kind of equipment, but I know some of them just to rent it per dump site and it come that way because most of the things are $40,000. Yeah. Well, right. And then you got to have a trailer to haul it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most time when you rent stuff off them, they have a trailer. Like, so. okay. That may be a good idea. It seemed like it's $150 an hour I saw one that you could rent it. If you're only going to use it a few times, it is cheap to rent. And then once you get into it, where if you start using it more often, then you could look into doing the purchase instead of rent. Yeah, I don't make sense. Sense. I don't think you'd do that many of them. But as far as cleaning up on sites and you know, not with the needles and all that. I mean, something like Kevlar gloves and you know those kind of things. Yeah, just whatever you need for It's important yeah. as well. And then if, if they're on uh, forest service land, you could always go get four service resources because they've got the they've got all the bobcats and all the stuff for the fire line so if his life is on forest service he could just call them did you have a question do you? i do <laughs> okay. related to this right no okay we'll have to wait <laughs> <laughs> okay. i have something on the garbage judge we found as, as we've been out we found three pretty good sized dumps but we're finding a lot and I guess my question is this. Is there any way that the 
outside can t be open more than one day a week because if it can't, people's going to dump. When they're cleaning up around their house, when they're doing other things, and they're ready for that stuff to be done. It's well, I mean, uh, we, c we can't tell them that they have to do that. I mean, the former provider abandoned us completely and we, the county ran the transfer station over there and we were open five days a week, but we were losing approximately $3,000 a month. Uh, the, the problem with that, anybody that has a load of stuff right now, it's cheaper to take that on down to Winfield to the landfill because pop parting, even the dumpster they have over there, they have to charge probably about three times what it would cost to, for somebody to dump it down there because they've got a dumpster rent, rental the same as what we had when we operated it, and they, they charge every time that they come up and dump it, plus then they charge for the tonnage of that dumpster. <coughs> so they were losing money as well. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of questions that need some answers in terms of how we can do this. But. And I've been getting a lot of complaints on the, from, from the uh, customers taking cars over there, charging different amounts each week. I mean, they're jumping it up every week on these contractors. And I've, I've spoken with uh, Mr. Cheney about that to see if there's some kind of loophole that we've not been able to find anything yet. But they just charge what they want, and they're raping a lot of our contractors. And I think it's wrong. Yeah. And they don't have they don't have scales over there, so they're having to estimate what they think the weight is based on the type of material it is. And so, I mean, I think that's and, why they're And it's the same the same material. They're they're taking the same same material one week versus the next, and they'll double the price on. I mean, it's it's well, unreal. that third. At once you vote, you I mean, that that contract you got. <laughs> Yourself, Which was the best contract that we had offered well, to us? Yeah. <laughs> so. Just the mandate is that I live just for it and yeah. sign it. That guy said he took trailer around and wanted four hundred something dollars. No. Yeah. Took his own out and charged him thirty eight dollars. No. So that's what we got to deal with. Yeah. Of course, you know. I'm, I'd have to see what they done, rather than what they brought over there, but I, I understand. But it is about, they told me it's at least three times higher what they had to charge than what the person could dump the same load at Scott County. Because they're having to pay Scott Solid Waste for the service of providing the dumpster, coming and dumping the dumpster, plus the tonnage charge at the landfill itself. So, so that's I mean, where you can get it dumped right? off over the bank. <laughs> Well, I know he ain't right, but that's that place to play. Yeah. Until we get our garbage situation cleaned up, we're not going to improve our situation here in the county. I mean, that's a big, big, big uh, issue that we we have to resolve. We feel like that we've made a step in the right direction. Uh, do we, are we there yet? No, we're not. But there's, you know, we have to. We have to clean our county up if we're wanting to improve. If we want people to come in and invest money in businesses, we're going to have to present a, a community that's at least care enough about ourselves that we clean up our place. So you know, we, we'll do what we can. <coughs> Covered on that day. Yes. McCray County Reservoir. So there's lots of candidates in this room, and so I'm sure you all may be interested in something good that's happening in the county. So. Um, in light of the, the county building the park and some of the, the things that happened at the McCray County Park on the north end of Whitley, there was a planned 40-acre lake. Um, that lake did not happen and most likely will not happen. Um, Steve Owens, who is now retired from the Water District, approached this court three or four years ago and said, hey, why don't we do something out at the reservoir um, since the, the issue happened with the park. So this court, roughly three years ago, agreed to move forward with an agreement with McCray County Water District and the United States Forest Service um, to turn the reservoir into a recreation area. Um, <clears throat> there's an 80 acre lake at the reservoir. Many of you all fish out there anyway, know that it exists. Um, what we did was we petitioned to go in and build a one and a half mile hiking trail around the lake, um, provide better boat access to the lake and do some other kind of recreation type amendments. Um, <clears throat> to date, it's not costed the county anything. There's been some gravel expense out there. It's a county road anyway that's going down to the boat ramp. 
Um, here over the last little bit, I know lots of people were energized about it when the project started, but there's been very little happen. Bob Blevins is sitting back there and Bob asked me about once a month, when are you going to get started? When are you going to get started? Um, so we are to the point now that the Forest Service has issued a special use permit on the project, which will allow us to go in and begin construction on that project. Um, we applied for and received a $75,000 grant through the Recreational Trails Program with the state of Kentucky, which will help us build the uh, trail around the lake, which will help us build a handicap accessible fishing pier on the lake, and will also help us build a dam or a bridge across the old dam connecting that um, hiking trail all the way around. Um, after the trail engineers got finished with it, we will have a three mile trail out there as opposed to a one and a half mile trail. Last week, <clears throat> Judge Stevens signed the memorandum of agreement on the grant um, with the state of Kentucky and with, with the federal government, and we've pretty much been given go ahead on this project. If you saw the paper last week, there was a bid notice in the paper. Um, we're taking bids on building the bridge across the old dam now. Um, we should bring that to the court at the May 11th meeting to open those bids. So in hopes of within six months or by the fall of the year, that project is well on its way. Um, and having a three mile trail, having better water access. I've been able to work through a, um, another private foundation in the county um, on the side and secure funds to help build a concrete boat ramp out there. Um, so lots of fishermen that go out there now have to drag their flat bottom boat out of the back of the pickup truck and try to get it in the water. And I've seen people out there trying to kayak and that same kind of issue. So by the end of the fall, there should be a nice concrete boat ramp at the reservoir. And um, but it is a, it's still a no motors allowed on the reservoir because it's a secondary water supply. Yeah, you can use a trolling motor, just no gas motor. Right. But, but that's five minutes away from town, um, and it's a great little area um, for families and people to be able to go use. And to date, it's really not cost the taxpayers anything unless you look at the tax money that you pay the federal government and highway fees. But other than that, so I just wanted to let folks know about that. And that RTP grant is what's going to actually fund the, the bridge. We'll fund the bridge, yeah. The bridge is the bulk of it. The bridge, will, I'm expecting to cost fifty or $60,000. It's a 65-foot span going across the old dam. Um, it'll have to be four foot wide to be ADA accessible. Um, and then we'll build a <coughs> fishing pier on the old water intake, which on what I call the finger or the point of the old dam. Um, so if folks are interested, probably here within the next month, I will start putting some stuff out on Facebook asking for volunteers. So if you're into trail building or picking up garbage, there's garbage out the reservoir as well, things like that. If you're interested in helping in any other way, um, it's just a start and there will be other park-like or recreation amenities that we'll need out there to make it better for families. Um, so just thought to let people know. You got anybody got any questions about the reservoir, reservoir project? Thank you for all your work. Thanks. Hilton County Park Center still got its own restrooms, rooms, picnic areas, the college restroom area yet. They didn't. You said that area. As far as I know, at one time, it was back when uh, Miss Cheney was tourism director, we went down there and scoped some of that stuff out, and the concrete picnic tables were to the point that the concrete was degrading and what swing set equipment down there was no good. I mean, there's other grant opportunities, so I mean, I'm gonna continue to look at other funding for things. And it's, I mean, we need garbage cans and we need um, um, restroom facilities, things like that. Um, the will be required with the Forest Service to put in what they call SST, or sweet smelling toilets. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so they're, they're about $25,000. Um, so it would be great to have those installed down there at the, at the parking area for folks. Um, if people want to donate lumber and donate time, we can build picnic tables and put out there on that little finger of the dam so that way when you're fishing you can take a break. So it's just another little nice area. I, I have um, of the thought that even though that the federal government has a 70 or 700,000 acre park out here in the backyard of us, I don't think that people in the county have enough parks, um, so we, so especially for young kids. So it will be bikeable, it will be hikeable. Um, so, it would be cool. Oh, well, okay, yeah. So, <clears throat> Chamber of Commerce, um, Susie Thompson, Chamber of Commerce, who also is part of the Girl Scouts, um, 
she went in on this, helped with this project and pulled the Girl Scouts in and applied for a health department grant um, and was awarded $2,500 that we will use to buy kayaks and paddle boards and canoes and safety equipment. So in hopes of partnering with tourism, partnering with Girl Scouts and partnering with other folks that, you know, so we can go out once a month and have safety clinics and just water recreation and stuff for young kids. Super 70, like I said, 70 acre um, waterway, super safe um, fish, there's good fish in it. So again, um, I'm 40. I was one of those that said, we don't have nothing to do here when I was little. And I was 40 year old, I still say we don't have nothing to do here. So um, again, it's something cool that we can, we can have for people that's interested in it and kids that are interested in it. So. Okay. Anybody else? You got a question for any other department heads? Okay. If not, uh, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is citizen participation. Uh, just a few ground rules on that. I mean, you know, if you stand to present something to the court, just identify uh, who you are and, and uh, try to keep your comments as brief as possible to allow others to have time to uh, be able to speak as well. So, so Vicki, now's your time, I guess, since okay. you asked earlier. <laughs> I was going to let him and say, Dan, can I talk? <laughs> well, I, I just think <coughs> the litter here is just deplorable. Um, and people do it so freely. Uh, probably, you know, it's on the Jenny's Branch Road, and I'm out there at least once a week picking up garbage. Uh, there's just not, not a deterrent. I mean, why not? Uh, if we had cameras, um, I had gone to Conley and uh, I'd seen someone throw some, a bottle out and told them about it. But, but it's my understanding we have to see them do it. Is that true? I can't, but it's not a question for the court so much. You're talking about criminal prosecution. Well, I'd have to go back and look at the affidavit again and try to remember what the details of it were. But. Well, I saw that one that I told you about. But, but you know, as far as cameras, if you if you you'd have to have a video camera, and you'd have to have somebody going through hours and hours of car after car, and then you'd have to have it at the right spot when they were throwing it out. We've tried to real problem areas. We've tried to set up some trail cams, but the problem with trail cams, you know, movement ca causes them to flash a picture, and it's hard to. To be uh, for the sensor to let that camera know to flash a picture and the picture get taken before the car is already gone. And then you have to have a license plate and then you have to see that car actually have thrown it out. I mean, there's other but things. I think it's, well, well. <laughs> it, there's a lot of those issues pertaining to prosecution and all that we have no nothing to do with. But we, if we could find some way to figure out how to do that, well, it would be I, great. I want to experiment. I'll, I'm gonna try an experiment, but um, it's just—it's terrible. I mean, I, I clean up once a week, and and they know they're throwing it out. Uh, but there's not any way that someone can stand there all day and and watch, you know, somebody throw garbage out of a car, and then you might not know who they are. But we would have the plate number. I, I think if you can get us the plate number, that generally helps. There was some issue when you came in, I can't remember what it is now, but I remember you coming in, that it's not, this is the wrong court for, for prosecution. But as far as resources, certainly, if uh, this, this is fiscal policy court, essentially. So if, if they wanted to vote on things of fiscal policy, of <laughs> spending money on cameras and things like that, but again, we've got a whole lot of county and I, and there's no special rule that you have to have this video or that particular thing. It's a matter of, just think of it as a juror. If you were a juror, will it convince you beyond a reasonable doubt to convict whoever's accused of throwing it out? And if we can have that evidence, that's great. I would love um, I remember asking Dad, you know, when you were, when you were prosecuting, what was your biggest obstacle on, on prosecuting litter? Because that's just something that's always killed me, too. Um, yeah. And he said, find me a witness. He said, find the witnesses. People don't tend to throw it out in front of somebody. I know it does happen from time to time. Um, so we have, we have to have someone to actually no, see. No, there's no, it's some kind of evidence to show who did it so that we can convince a jury that they did it. Otherwise, 
uh, you got to at least have probable cause to charge, and then you have to have stronger evidence to actually convict. But, uh, but no, I mean, we've got good evidence, and the license plates are huge. If you see something coming out of the car, uh, please write down the license plate. Okay. Make a note. Was was this? Uh, it looked like a male, female driver. Give me all the details you possibly can, but you don't have to know their name. But if you can get a license okay. plate, we can get some presumptions. It's just getting worse and worse since I've been there. I mean, there's garbage bags thrown over, and I go over the bank and get them. No, I, I rode through. The, I ride around <laughs> trying to find different places also for community uh, uh, service, and I went to town Jeans Branch just a week or two ago. And thought the same thing. I, I, that road really has been abused. It, yeah, it is. It's just terrible. Like many. I mean, if, if everybody out there that dislikes litter would take initiative and report when you see something, I mean, it, it's got to help in the long run. Yeah. <coughs> Cumberland Falls cleanup is April 28th. Um, they need volunteers to clean up <coughs> Falls Highway. So it's, it's really bad. What about our county? Is it this weekend? <coughs> um, yes. Yeah, this, this Saturday? So where do they get the garbage bags? They've been asked here. Right now, it's, it's mostly for the, the groups that are going to be. I talked to Kelly today about that. There's what ten groups signed up. So I think uh, you all have a list in your office about the groups that are signed up. And then I guess people can contact those groups to, yeah. to join with them. <coughs> That'd be right. the best bet. Uh, yeah. But generally, if anybody wants to do uh, any time other than just this weekend. Uh, just let us know. We'll get you the bags. If you call us up and say, I want to hit this stretch of road. Uh, you can pick up bags in our office, or uh, Cody's hard to catch because he doesn't really have an office and he's always out there. But but he does leave bags with us in the county attorney's office, and you can pick them up with us. Or and then you just go out, you, you bag up the stretch, call us back, say I bagged up the stretch. You have to leave the bags on the side there, so that when litter abatement comes back through, they can see first, yes, it's clean, and there's the bag. They can confirm that this is not just some household trash set out there, right? Okay. But, uh, well, but that, that's kind of that's kind of an open offer pretty much all the time. And then the, uh, if anybody has fines, uh, we have now got the judges going along with the program we've been trying to push for a while, but uh, um, anybody wants to work off their fines, can't work off restitution. If somebody owes somebody money, uh, they, don't, they don't forgive restitution, but you can get your court costs and fines, and it pays pretty well. So uh, I had a question on the, um, the nonprofits. I, I've told a couple, used to, they had the participate in the false cleanups is it different this year? well no so so usually the false cleanup is in late March or early April right. so and I try to get the groups going in April so I didn't want to hold the groups back from being able to participate so they still are required to go to the April 28th <coughs> false cleanup and volunteer for what that you're saying is they can start on their $50 a mile this weekend is what you're saying <coughs> yes but, yeah. they but, have, but, they have to but if they've paper. never used if they've never done it they have to go to the falls they have cars. to go to the falls cleanup yes yeah most of the groups that are involved are groups that have cleaned up for you since we started the program well, this I've, way like I said I've had a couple ask me about that I told them they'd go to the falls first they what they need to do is contact Peggy Peggy can Peggy can get them the paperwork and give them the details <laughs> and then they go to the falls cleanup and that qualifies them Three seven six two four one three. If you're interested in participating in that, do we have an ordinance? It seems like a long time ago there was an ordinance like five hundred dollars for living yes. and five thousand dollars for dumping. Do we? Yes. That's, that's, that's is that still on the books? It's actually, state law. Yeah. Is that a state law? Well, there, there's both. There's a county law on the books and then the state law. And I don't. I'm not an attorney, but he can tell you. It could. That one works, could but I, I guess you could double prosecute and put near double charge. Would it? Would it be helpful since? Jimmy's making signs. If he put out a few signs that said five hundred dollars for littering, and then at these dump sites, I know it doesn't do any good. But you know, sometimes when you see a sign, it may jog somebody's memory to think, oh, maybe I better not throw a ball. No, I'm I'm not up here every day any longer. But when I was here every day, um, that was one of the things that we did. And you put up a no dumping. We would go in, clean up a dump, no dumping sign under surveillance, put up gang cameras the whole nine yards. They just moved down the road. Yeah. Two weeks later, you'd find another dime. Yes, so. I like the idea of the signs, but on a slightly different twist. And I haven't been able to, my mind, come up with a creative thing. So I think the marketing, I think this is kind of your thing here. But help me out. Some kind of sign that maybe doesn't say $500 for littering, but just shaming people. Just, yeah. but, but, the, but the reminder of don't do it, maybe. But there's some I'll message. Think, that, I'll think it's something that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. But I've got to wonder, too. 
And you don't want what Roger would put on the side. I don't know. I mean, people put some pretty nasty things on their cars. It might not. Well, it might not be just I requested from Frankfurt to see if they would put up a sign five hundred dollars for littering, and uh, they wouldn't do it. They put up a sign on Poplar Springs Road, something about help keep our something our county clean or something like that. I, I think it probably does it about the same. As yeah, it everybody knows it's silly. Yeah. On a matter of litter, uh, I was doing a pickup last weekend, coming across the house on Third and had some names. I called 911 requesting an officer to come out and pick it up. They said, throw it away. So, I mean, are we not enforcing it? I know you require some type of evidence, but if you find household litter in a ditch with names in the litter, I mean, there's your evidence. But, can I, can I say this? It's better if, if an official goes through that garbage and finds that name. Well, that's why I because called. Because I didn't bother. Because I know there's a chain of custody involved in a criminal matter. So that's why I called 911 to have a deputy come back here and collect that. Therefore, there's no break in the chain of custody. And uh, my response was, I have to throw it away. And I think I got one. A dozen bags the other day for me, just on a small stretch of 60 feet. <laughs> so what what can we do about that? Well, I mean, we try, if we get a report of a dump or garbage somewhere, that's what we try to do, go through it and find out if we can find information in there that would indicate who, who that garbage belonged to before right. it was done. So if we do that, then we try to go ahead and prosecute. It, it would be helpful if, you know, we find a name. One, that's, it, that's at least some evidence. Well, how did your garbage get out there, right? It doesn't necessarily prove it, but it's, it's some evidence in that direction. But I think it's a good start on an investigation. I know we, we have very limited funding for police resources. So investigations are it's hard, but with the new ordinance, that's pretty good evidence that if, if their garbage is out on the side of the road, if we could then check with the garbage company, if there was a if there was a code enforcement officer that was looking at that kind of thing, well, there could be there could be a process there to say, but but there could be a process then they could cross reference say, well, now we see that they're not signed up for, for the garbage. Maybe we can't hit them with a litter charge. We can hit them with a violation of the county ordinance. And at that point. Um, but you know, the penalty on that is just as high as a littering charge. And the then if they turn around and sign up on garbage. Somebody go out there and collect the evidence, and they're just animal yeah, that's literally throwing away. I mean, that just kind of defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Doesn't it defeat the purpose when you call officials to come out and collect that evidence, and they just kind of like, eh, to throw it away? Well, that's. Uh, we don't say that, and I don't know what uh, the circumstances were. Uh, that's what 911 told me that the officer told me they called me that okay. Somebody, Someone else have something? Should be on recording every report, everything 911. Anyone else have anything you want to present to the court? Uh, if not, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Other business. Uh, this is a part of the court meeting for the, the magistrates. If you have anything to bring, present to the rest of the court, now's the time to do that. Doug, um, I got something that I need to, I need to address uh, my district three. Um, Greg, can you, Zeke, can you see that pretty good? Can you zoom in on that pretty good? Someone, you all may have got this in the mail today. Uh, someone had printed off some postcards um, about don't forget who raised your taxes and sent them out all over the county. I don't know who did it. <coughs> they didn't you know name or nothing. Someone's been, they went pretty low here, I think. I think that's low while. And they're being a coward. I mean, don't, just put your name on it. If you want to talk, we'll talk. Okay. One of them here said um, voted to increase occupational tax. Yes, I did that. If it, anybody that followed us about this time last year knows that DOD come down and we was in dire straits. We was about, you know, we could have lost our our, um, our services, okay? Now, that, that's that, that, that's a fact. I did do that. Okay, now the other one here is voted on the extension service tax. Now, that, now, that's, that, now that's where they're lying right there. None of us voted, voted for an extension tax. So, now if I did, I will sit here and say I did. And uh, so I want to uh, encourage if my district 
if uh, they want to call and talk about it, 310-8868, and I'm in, I'm in the um, phone book too. And if the person who did this, the coward, whoever it is, if they're in the room, speak up. We'll talk. Um, they can call me too. And uh, we'll go out to lunch and we'll talk about that yellow street down the back. Whatever you want to talk Amen, about. Amen, brother. So, now this is pretty low, and I'm upset. Now, I'm still here. I'm shaking. I can't hold it straight. But I think I think this is pretty low. Now, if they want to address their district, that's fine. But don't go spreading lies. This is my third campaign, and I've um, I've never run a dirty race against anybody. And I won't talk bad about David, Bobby, or Ronald, or Clayton, or whoever's running against me. You can ask uh, David Murphy and Ralph Murphy. We've all had clean races. I won't speak ill of anybody. And they did me. And that's the way it's going to be on this term, too. Now, I don't appreciate this. So, and um, they might want to consider that defamation of character, too. That's wrong. So, buddy, just call me if you want to talk. That's all I want to say. If not, just just, uh, just stay here. And one, there's a name on here, too, that, uh, that don't make the best sense. It's got the White Ross on here. As you can see, he's not up here. and uh, But somebody's afraid of him. Way to go, Dwight. You got somebody scared. Hey, Amen, brother. This I'll is the real statement. I'll, I'll, I'll just add to that. It's got that I voted to increase the occupational tax. I didn't vote for that. So, you know, I've got minutes. You know, I got proof of my record. And I, don't, I'm all, I don't run for my record either. Oh, no, no. Another thing. No, he, he didn't have my mailing address on it. Somebody was sent, they got it sent to me. But uh, I, I, hope they, I hope they come to my house and talk to me about it. It was mailed to someone. Yeah, it was mailed. Yeah, somebody had printed off the mailing address of everybody down here. So, yeah, they didn't send one to my house. Yeah, they didn't send one to my house. But it wouldn't matter if they did because they, they ain't no proof where it come from. And please, in my district, don't, could you get this, it, throw it away, don't take heed for that. I mean, if you want to talk to me about it, that's fine. But, and if you want to, and I'm not saying vote, vote for me over anything else. If you want to vote for someone else in here, that's fine. But don't let this be the reason. That's all I want to say. Of course, I'd recommend anytime you hear anything from anybody, verify what's being said. Don't tell. Verify what's being said. Everything that's voted on here is open records. Follow open record requests. See, see what people vote on. I mean, follow, follow the past. Don't even have to do that, Roger. You can go downstairs in Eric's office. The minutes are stored there. Yeah. <coughs> Face your issues on facts. <laughs> okay, I, was, I, I had a couple things I was going to talk about. Um, at the last conference I was attended, uh, they were talking about drug and alcohol free workplace substance abuse policy. And uh, he talked about us uh, being able to save 5% on our workman's comp uh, insurance each year if we pass this ordinance. Uh, I'm going to ask the judge to look at it and see if the cost, you know, if, if it's a. I know <laughs> the drug panels are more than what we drug test for now. 20 versus 12. You know, and the cost may override what we're going to save, but I'd ask him to look into this and, you know, get back with us and let us know what, you know, which of the savings it is. Right. What I'd like to do on that is uh, next month we bid out for services for the county for the next fiscal year. So I'd like to, when we bid out the drug testing, to find to bid. Uh, the normal panels testing that we do, plus an additional one of the, the 20 panels that are specific for this particular program. And then that way we get those numbers that we can compare and look at. Because we, we know what the cost we, is. We've saved close to $10,000. Know, we just got to figure out how much it's going to cost us to do these extra panels. <coughs> it's worth the savings. I'll, I'll do that. And also, we've got to uh, bring up, a, we got we got to talk about a date on the public hearing. Advertising for the public hearing on the um, extension report. I'll open that up to anybody that wants to talk about it. We've got to, we've got advertising and go ahead, Jason, you just want to say something? Advertising on the 26th, was that right? I mean, is that a good date? Then, then you've got 26th to this month? Yeah. I've got some dates that I'll give to you for the public hearing. If we, the only thing, whenever we advertise, we've got to have that hearing 15 days 
after it's advertised or and before 30 days. So if you're going to advertise it on April 26th, you're looking at somewhere between May 12th. Uh, May yeah, 26th. May May 12th through May 26th. We're going to have, to have a, we'll have to set the uh, the date for it. What's good for you? What can you not do? So that's that's if you set it on April. He's got to do it after May 15th. Anytime after May 15th. Well, that's if, if you if you guys are wanting, you said you want to do it on the 26th. If we do it the 26th, we can do it between February or <coughs> May 12th and through May the 26th. So we just need to pick a date. We just need to make a motion that we advertise, but we don't have to have a date before we can make a motion. <coughs> Fine with me. The 26th, if that's good with everybody, that's fine with me. Do the public hearing on the 26th? Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll make a motion that we advertise April the 26th, April the 26th for what we can come up with a date, though. You want to have to be April the 12th and the 26th. April 26th. What do you think about the 24th of May? That's on Thursday. May 24th. May 24th. It's on Thursday. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Why can't you do it before the election? Well, we can do it before the election if we advertise next week. But Dustin says he can't be there before the 15th and four of us. Five of us got to be here. We can't vote. I mean, if we don't have two thirds of the vote, it ain't going to count anyway. We want to back up and redo the whole thing. So we got to do it when everybody can, can be here. Well, I, I was just explaining the question. Okay. But we we'll make a motion. We do it. That we advertise April 26th to have a special uh, to have a town hall meeting or a, was it <coughs> public, public hearing, public hearing <laughs> on Thursday the 24th of May at 6 p.m. <coughs> here in the courthouse. Here at the fiscal courtroom. Now you've got to advertise because you didn't advertise last time. You got us off a week because you failed to advertise till two weeks later. So I'm, make, I'm making that into my motion that. We advertise April 26th. Because, you, like I said, you delayed us a week for not getting there last time. Huh? I didn't know I was supposed to advertise that. We, we, we told you last court meeting. I'll second the motion. So we have a motion and a second. And then, and then on the discussion, then we have to pass the first reading and second reading within 60 days to make it legal. So we can that sometimes. Greg, when you uh, report on this in the paper and add them on the radio, uh, put on there that I, I encourage all the district three that's involved in this to come out and speak their mind. I mean, I'm willing to negotiate if uh, this is a long, drawn, drawn out process and uh, we need to put this behind us one way or another. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to negotiate. So put that paper and add them on the radio for too. A motion and a second to have the, uh, the public hearing for the dissolution of the extension board on Thursday, May the 24th at what time? 6 p.m. 6, 6 o'clock p.m. at the fiscal court room here uh, to be advertised in the April 26th newspaper. That will give us between the 15 and 30 days. Okay. okay. Uh, any further discussion? I, I would like to say I'd like to have it over with before the election, but you but, you but yeah. we got to have we got to have a public here, mm -hmm. and you got to have a month of first reading, and then another month of second reading. So there's no possible we're out we're out of months. But I, I would agree with you. I'd like to have it over with. It just kind of seems well. Well, it's been don't do well, it before the election. Well, it's been well. How do you pass mm -hmm. two readings on it and do a public hearing in a month? Well, I, and I have to. maybe it's just a coincidence. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, we've been working fine. on this for six, seven months, and we've been trying to do the right down the guidelines to where we're doing it right and if we're going to do it right we got to do it right I mean, to get it passed so that's i mean if you can come up with a way we can do it public hearing and two readings and you know that long we'll do it i don't know his reason but i mean maybe you know whatever but the court is going first unless it's something you can't put off i don't know 
acknowledge that even if even if we did meet, if we advertise next week and you met, you're still going to just have one reading, public hearing, one reading. You're still going to like the second reading after the election. So I mean, there's nothing you do. Forever well, but it goes in snappy way. I agree with you. I agree with you 100. But I mean, it's I mean we're doing it by. Long I mean, process. I'll, I'll ask Conley, are we doing it wrong? It's a long process that has never been done in the state of Kentucky on an extension tax before. Uh, but you're on pace to get it done to before any future tax years. Uh, so the election is kind of an arbitrary timeline. I mean, we, we're not here to do politics. This is about doing the county's business. So if, if the county's business is the court that wants to do this, it takes a process. and. Uh, your timeline really to affect uh, taxpayers. If that's the ultimate goal, then would be to have it done well in advance of the next tax roll. Right. And, and if we mess up, and you're, you're you certainly in place for that. You go back and do the steps again. So, I mean, I'm taking I'm taking advice from legal counsel. I mean, I'm I'm doing what they're telling me to do. So. Well, I want to uh, bring up another thing too while we're talking about this. We talked about being a voice for our district. I want to go on record by inviting everybody to come out on that day in my district. I'm willing to do a hand count. If they want to raise your hand and say where they're at, my, my vote, I, I'm willing to let my vote be on the majority of my district on what they raise your hand for. If, they're want, if they want this extension service, I know it won't be no $200,000 what that was, was brought before, but if they want to come down to like 100 or maybe a little less or something, I, I'm willing to do that. But I want to listen to District 3 when they come out. If they want to be confident enough to raise their hand and say, I'm for $100,000 or whatever or less, my decision will be on the majority of their vote. So I'll, I'll be, I'm will be going to be fair to them. So if, they, if, they, if the majority is for it, that's how I'll vote. If they're against it, that's how I'll vote. So there you go. Anything else? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever done that before? About what? When you vote, do you ever vote just what you want or do you listen to the people? Well, I we, mean, that's yes you, no. Do you do that? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Okay. When, listen, listen. When we have, like, the garbage, you always talk about the garbage, okay? We don't just, we can't just up and do it. we got to have public hearings like that to say this is, you got to have, like, a first ordinance and a second ordinance. It ain't all of a sudden. And yeah, we listen to people when they come up and talk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't see you here when that was being debated about the garbage, but I see you now rapping about it. I'm not rapping. I'm just stating fact. I'm not rapping. At well, you. I'm stating fact too. You do what you have to do. People are different. Okay, we got a motion in a second for the public meeting hearing to be on uh, <coughs> May the twenty. Fourth at six o'clock at fiscal courtroom. Uh, so we may have to have somewhere else. We can do that. <laughs> I have to move next door. I guess we can. No, we'll, we'll be here at the courthouse somewhere. Maybe on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here, and if it's uh, if the location has been changed, we'll try to make that known as well. So. Okay. Uh, vote, please. Magistrate Man. Yeah. Magistrate Baird. Yeah. Mr. Perry, yay. Mr. Phillips, yay. Judge Stevens, abstain. I'll be here. I mean, I just my abstaining is uh, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not in favor of the dissolution, and uh, you know I'm not trying to in interfere with the process or anything like that. I just uh, make sure people know where I stand as well. I'll be here for the public hearing, and I'll be here whether I was for it or against it, I'll be here, so. Okay, uh, anything else in other business? Oh, uh, the uh, plan for the, for the jail, did you hear anything on, on the plan for the jail? Well, they have the information, the guy stopped by about a week and a half ago just passing through and said uh, nothing to report yet. They'll let us know when it's finished. But before they told Roger that it'd be a month. I talked to him two days ago and they're still working on it. Okay. They told us that it'd be about a month, so it's probably been close to at this point, right? Yeah. I think you mean what? Yeah. 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 Y
what is it, 170,000 a month paid for the credit is going to other counties. I could even take that, just borrow money, build a deal, and take that monthly premium and pay more payments. Well, that's what this study is for, is to see, play it out both sides to see if feasible, if it's, it's feasibility study, see if it's feasible to build jail versus, you know, I think it's feasible to build jail, but some of us don't, you know, it's that's the reason we got somebody in here doing a feasibility study. Plus, if you had the money to build a jail uh, today, you got to do the feasibility study first. Mm -hmm. So, it's the first step. Well, I mean, like, you know, between all of you and he got us over there, you should be able to plan it out without I don't know where it is actually going on. Well, you well, can't like just said, build it. It, it doesn't matter. It's still, you still got to have the, you still got to have that plan you do that. before. It, like I said, like I said, if you had the money to build it today, you had the money. You still got to do this feasibility study for you to do anything. Then you have to have all the architectural stuff, and it has to be approved. I mean, it's not. Like, it's just not like you go out here building a garage. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. it's it it took office. Knox County almost ten years to work through the process of building the jail, and three months ago they started pouring foundation. I'm not going to say it's going to take us that No, but it, I mean, it's that a was, long, that was, it's a process. So they was working on it when they wasn't given no jail. They wasn't wanting no jails built. Now they're kind of an opposite. Well, I mean, it makes sense. You keep money in cash, you do that. Well, like I said, that's why, that's why we're doing the things real estate. We've got to do it before we do it. What about that? Written paper there, Bob. You want to be in jobs? Are you all doing anything yet? Are you working yet? I'm talking about the, the coming to the closing paper this week. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're Veteran talking about the, pro the opportunity zone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we should probably go on it and it don't do nothing except it. Well, that, that opportunity zone that process, time. designation, all that is not like, <clears throat> okay, the gates are unopened and people are expecting to come. It's just an opportunity based on the federal tax cut and some provision that they made for the for businesses to, to invest in communities in that are in that opportunity zone area and save on capital gains taxes and a whole lot of other taxes. So it's a big, huge tax break for businesses. So it gives us more of an opportunity. It gives them more of an incentive to, to come here. Anybody else have something you want to bring before the, the support? If not, uh, move on. Uh, item number 16 is to pay the bills as presented. What's the pleasure of the court? It's, well, let me, let me read. I mean, basically, overall, the bills for this month are $242,331.39. Uh, 85000 of that roughly is in the jail, jail fund. That includes housing. That includes transport, that includes gas, that includes every salaries, everything, well, not salary. That includes everything pertaining to that. that so these are just bills that are presented to be paid, excluding salaries of the transport. Make a motion to pay bills. Okay, a motion by Magister Phillips. Please I second. Second by who wants to find it out? Yeah. Magister Baird. <laughs> Uh, any questions about the bills? Okay, uh, vote please. Mr. Mann? Yay. Mr. Baird? Yay. Mr. Perry? Yay. Mr. Phillips? Yay. Judge Stevens? Yay. Uh, item number 17, I recommend that uh, the motion and second to enter into executive session pursuant to KRS 61-810, uh, paragraph 1C, uh, relative to uh, small business loan issue. I have a motion by Mr. Baird. Second. Second by Mr. Perry. Just, just for the benefit of everybody in the room, uh, my understanding is this is to talk about a specific loan that's in litigation. Yes. So, I'll have everybody. And that was, that was going to be my question. Can we not, can, as long as we don't bring up the name, can we not just discuss it here? I, mean, I, I have to bring up the name. If you do anything, you have to come out and say what you did. Right. So I'm just saying. So there's no. Thing. This looks like it's a we're hiding something. I, I don't want that. It's a negotiation on a potential settlement of the lawsuit. Right, I understand. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll take your advice. 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 I'm not advising either one. It's just a it's a deal. We have a motion and a second, so I need a vote to enter executive session. Master Perry? Yay. Master Phillips? Yay. Master Mann? Yay. Master Baird? Yay. Master Stephen? Yay. Second to re-enter regular session from executive session. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Okay. I need a motion and a second to... <laughs> End the executive session and re enter regular session. I like motion. I have a motion by Magistrate Phillips. Second. Second by Magistrate Perry. Uh, vote, please. Magistrate Mann? Yay. Magistrate Baird? Yay. Magistrate Perry? Yay. Magistrate Phillips? Yay. Judge Stevens? Yay. We, uh, <laughs> we, we had a, an offer uh, from two of the revolving loan holders. Uh, Trying to reach some kind of settlement, and, uh, and uh, our consensus there, which is not official until it's voted for out here, is to uh, reject those and uh, as presented and uh, and move forward with what we're doing. So I need a motion and a second, saying as such. I make motion. I have a motion by Magistrate Phillips. I second. Second by Magistrate Baird. What he's saying is we're proceeding with litigation. I mean, we're, we're continuing on. Okay. Uh, vote, please. Magistrate Mann? Yeah. Magistrate Baird? Yeah. Magistrate Perry? Yeah. Magistrate Phillips? Yeah. Judge Stevens? Yeah. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. <laughs>